My name is Lauren Southworth. I'm in my late 40s. Um, I was born in Zimbabwe um, and have spent most of my life in South Africa. Um, my childhood was spent um, in what was then Rhodesia, mostly peddled by Lou rolling the neighbours with my sister, who, you know, was partial to a sort of uh, tiara fashioned out of tinsel wrapped around an old wire coat hanger and fantasizing about becoming the lead singer of Boney M, a dream of mine that's since withered and died. But anyway, here we are. And now I've been married almost uh, 19 years and have two sons, both um, uh, um, one almost a teenager and one who's just made it into his teens. And, uh, and in a horrifying cliche, no doubt, of left-wingery, I would have to say that um, I also identify as being a massive tree hugger, um, a lipstick feminist, which is totally hot here in 2019, like champagne or Mardi Gras or something. Um, I'm also a Bible-thumping atheist. And, um, and by way of ancestry, I am an enormous mongrel, like most South Africans, I guess. There's Irish ancestry, um, a lot of Afrikaans heritage there. There is, um, if you rummage around, a few 18, 20 settlers from England. Um, so, yeah, uh, like most of us, um, your, your um, pedigree is lacking completely. Um, but hopefully uh, the genetic diversity was, was, was good for us all. So, yeah. So, the, the secrets to happiness. I mean, do I, do I have the secret to happiness? Like, no. <laughs> it's the sad, sad admission. But I guess after 47 years, you, you, have, um, you have a little bit more of an inkling and it's, I'm afraid, a whole sad bunch of cliches, but they're true. And the first of it is it's family and friends. It's that, in the end, all the other stuff seems not to matter nearly as much as you thought. I don't think you, you didn't get here. I don't, I don't lie in bed at night regretting the missed opportunities even, or the failures, or feeling warm and fuzzy as I reflect upon my catalogue of successes in this life, none of that happens. The things that make you feel all warm and fuzzy are, you know, the people who love you, the people that you love, who you sp the people that you want to, you, that you share your life with. It's them. It's, it's the hanging out, you know, on a Sunday morning, you know, in bed with a cup of coffee and having a laugh. It's, it's, the, it's those things, and that is, that is the secret for, for all of us. You know, we are like the, our, the social mammals, and those instincts are the ones that run the deepest in us, and that, that is number one. Number two, I think you need to find in your life, or well, I have needed to find in my life, um, some sense of purpose and meaning, and I think we all do. For me, it's, I've always, I need some kind of crusade. You know when you were a little kid and you always had this, you dreamed that you, you were going to change the world and then you found, you know, the decades went by and you found yourself, you know, stranded in somewhere in the barren wastelands of suburbia and your life is a bone-crushing monument to ordinariness, soul-crushing monument to ordinariness. And... Um, an infinitesimal part of you still, you know, has a little flicker of hope that someday, you know, it, you will be called forth to, you know, I don't know, fight, um, stand with the righteous to fight in the cause for good and evil. And that, that's, that's me. So I've kind of invented those for myself. I'm a like, massive, um, cliched, um, left winger. And, um, so I've made through my writing, uh, I've made an absolute um, crusade out of um, femini uh, my, my, my particular brand of bra burning and hairy armpitted feminism. 
and despite which I noticed the pay gap still exists so I've moved on to environmental activism in my in my writing lately and you know apart from obviously you know um, saving the earth I will be using and you know waging war again against Monsanto a one woman crusade until they are destroyed for future generations, yes, thank you, you're welcome. I also plan to use it to win a major literary award and use the prize money then to then have those um, reviews on, on Amazon that were less than three stars and to have those, those, those expunged for my record and those reviewers blocked or shot. But yeah, apart from that, it still felt that having that sense of a purpose in your life, that you you did something, okay, and it doesn't have to be that you were, you know, Nelson Mandela and you did in fact save the world. Your purpose in life could be, you know, rescue dogs. I had three of the little buggers and I gave them the dream life, but it's that. Find your purpose. Find your crusade, you know, and you just don that shimmering um, cape and your tights and you just pull the middle finger at you know the cynics and the jaded skepticism in the world because it takes courage to still be an idealist to be an optimist and to go out there and to try to say you know um, I'll make a difference me one of the nine billion yep I'm gonna make a tiny bit of a difference and it's gonna matter to me if no one else yeah that's my secret to happiness number two Okay, this is what I want to say to my children as they become adults, or maybe it's my grandchildren, maybe it's my great-grandchildren who I'm, I haven't even met you guys. Maybe it's, you know, total strangers, but this is what I want to tell you when you can look back is one of the best revelations about getting older, is that your formative years, as it turns out, are never over. You always had that sense when you're young that this is your only chance to decide who you're going to be, the person you're going to be, um, what you're going to do with your life, um, any of that. And you, you have this sort of morbid, you have the, well, it's generally your parents and the adults around you that put the morbid fear of God into you, that, you know, one false move, man, and that's it for you. You, you know, you're going to be waitressing at, at that spur for the rest of your life, and considering I'd got fired from my, you know, waitressing job after, like, six weeks or something, this, you know, really did terrify me. And beyond even um, your one and only chance um, at succeeding at your endeavors and having to find whatever your pursuit is going to be that you're going to be passionate about for the rest of your days it's also that sense that you're just this is it you're going to get to 21 or 25 or whatever or at whenever you're finally a grown-up because you never really feel like that either and you think and then I will, that will be it I will be me those you know growing up years are over and now I'm grown and in reality you find out that you never stop grow you never grew up you're always changing if you for me i mean it's my own personal passion and it's definitely a dying one but all i'm saying i'm a um i read i read voraciously and i can't the number of times that my whole world perspectives tilted where i've had to question um beliefs and assumptions that I've held, that I didn't even know I had held and that I, you know, cherished and that they were just a belief and they weren't actually some inalienable truth. And you, you become a different, and you know, as the world changes and it changes and it's, and it's the rate of change is accelerating so, it also influences you and you too um, constantly evolve. You're constantly changing into someone else. You, you have so many chances to be so many yous throughout your life. There'll be a you know different version of you, uh, you know as you, uh, you know. Then there's a little you know. Obviously, you take your your old you along with you, you know, inside. But gosh, it's exciting to know. It was, it's surely a relief. But it's also it's liberating to know that you, you there's unlimited opportunities to, to 
as you, even if you're getting now onto this, you know, wrong side now of, I mean, of the Kilimanjaro climb of life, I'm on the descent leg and still I feel so optimistic and hopeful about the future because of what I've discovered um, in the years of being an adult, how much is still open to you, always is. It's a gift and it's a secret that all of us, you know, who have to have Botox now know and it's one I would like to pass on to the young, fearful that they've got only this one chance and then it's over and the rest of your life is just basically killing time till you die. It's not like that. One of my favourite things. My favourite things have nothing to do with 2019 and are everything to do with what's perennial, everlasting. It's still going to be forever, amen, the African wild and what's our dwindling wilderness. Not just in Africa, but um, all over this poor beleaguered planet. And um, you guys have better have scattered my ashes somewhere, you know, where the sounds of the fish eagles um, can still be heard piercing the skies at sunset and my soul would be at peace even though I don't believe in souls but I would if if I'm not there somewhere in what's left of Africa and her magnificent beating heart the wild so since this is a snapshot of um, me at 47 in the year 2019. Um, I would just like to say as a survivor of the 80s, the decade that style forgot, um, I would just like to apologize to future generations for the eyebrows of 2019. There were those of us who knew that they were a mistake. Okay, thank you. We were embarrassed and wish they would take their little caterpillar legs and crawl off beautiful, beautiful models' faces. That, that's all I want to say about that. So I don't want to go on about this too much, but um, I just want to say to the future that um, we apologize uh, for the first generation of social media. Yes, yes, there were those amongst us in 2019 who had watched its birth um, and had winced with embarrassment and uh, we're still cringing now from the grave, okay? You people are probably sitting there in some social media classes, you know, 150 years from now, and you're like sniggering when you look at our cheesy, you know, Facebook posts, hashtag blessed, hashtag precious, hashtag. Um, and I want you to know, like we did the same thing when we looked at the adverts from 1950 or earlier, and um, I get now that there were probably those people in 1950 who knew that it was yeah just no but they could do nothing about it again i'm sorry okay if i didn't have another day if this was my last if tomorrow um isn't gonna come do you know you think th th there's so much i should say or or how would I spend the last day if I knew it was my last and all that? And you know what? The weirdest thing is, when you really think about that question, and I'm sure it's going to be the same, you know, forever for anyone. Actually, it's really, really simple. It's just too simple. You know, my last words are going to be love, live, love, laugh, love with all your heart. Don't hold back. You'll never be sorry. Whatever you've lost. And if I had not, no more time left, I'd want to spend every second of, what, of my last breaths with those I love. That's my boys and Mark, my dogs, if they were around, and my sisters, my folks who are still lucky enough that I still have with me now. Yeah, that's, that's what it all comes down to, and that's what it comes down to for everyone. Make sure you hold them all close. Remember to give lots of big hugs if that's the just the best a good old hug and yeah say sorry uh be grateful 
There are a bunch of cliches because they're the wisest words of wisdom. And yeah, that's it. I am Lauren, and I am not forgotten. <laughs>